Well, good morning. This is the fifth Sunday of Lent, just two weeks now till Easter. And we've been focused these past few weeks on Jesus, built up in Christ. The goal being a stable, secure faith with deep roots. And we've been doing that through the letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to the Colossians. So we've been talking about that goal for all of us, that stable, secure faith with deep roots. Well, Paul also gave them a couple of cautions, uh, cautions about faith, you know, to watch out for the people that would lure them, that would lure us into a super strict rules-based, earn your salvation kind of mentality. And he also warned them about the lure of the other extreme as well. You know, that extreme that was what we do now really doesn't matter because I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. Uh, after all, this world and everything in it is going away anyway. And what is spiritual is what will remain. And what I do with my body, with my world around me, with my life, doesn't really matter. Why? Well, because being a Christian is about going to heaven when we die. Oh, heaven. And heaven is certainly part of being a Christ follower, but it's not the only thing. And he Wright likes to say, heaven is important, but it's not the end of the world. So, Paul's answer to that is that what we do now does matter. Why? Well, he said it because you died to self, and now you live in Christ, and Christ lives in you. He said, set your mind on things above, where Christ is seated at God's right hand. Oh, and don't forget, that when you see him face to face, you'll be like him. So, let me cut to the chase. You know, leap ahead to the end of this message. Uh, this morning, if who am I? Who are you? I am one in whom Christ lives. I am one who has died to self and live again because Christ lives in me. Can you say that with me? I am one in whom Christ lives. And because that's true, I have to dress like the person I truly am. But more on that later. I don't know about you, but I love those stories where the hero of the story is somehow magically transformed and and those stories show up especially in fairy tales. You know, there's the story of the frog prince. That's the story of the good prince turned into a frog by a wicked fairy. And then turned back into a prince only after a kiss from the princess. Magic. Magic was the cure that took off the frog cloak and restored the prince to his true identity. Or maybe you remember the story of Beauty and the Beast, the handsome prince who, though handsome, was really truly a beast inside, and, and he actually became a beast. And only after his change of heart that happened through the love of the beautiful Belle, he becomes capable of love, and the magic cures the curse and turns him back into the handsome young man. In both of these fairy tales, it's a story of one set of clothes being taken off and another put in its place, and the magic is love. And in fact, we can look at these folk tales as signposts, as hints about the power of God's love that transforms us. You see, our story, 
our story as apprentices to Jesus, as Christians, is Christ in me. Christ in me. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. But unlike the magic of the stories where once the curse is broken, they live happily ever after. Yeah, unlike that story, we have the life of Christ in us and there's still work to be done. And Paul gives, a, gives us two word pictures about that. So far, it's been death and new life. Today, it's take off and then put on. Let me read for you uh, today's reading from the New Testament. It's Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 to 12. Uh, so, put to death the parts of your life that belong to the earth, such as sexual immorality, moral corruption, lust, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. The wrath of God is coming upon disobedient people because of these things. You used to live this way when you were alive to these things, but now set aside these things, such as anger, rage, malice, slander, and obscene language. Don't lie to each other. Take off the old human nature with its practices and put on the new nature, which is renewed in knowledge by conforming to the image of the one who created it. In this image, there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all things in all people. Therefore, as God's choice, holy, and loved, put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. These are the words of God for the people of God. Now, we've heard the message of put to death and new life in our last couple of messages. Put to death what belongs to your earthly nature. And Paul's explicit about what those things are. You know, sexual immorality, moral corruption, lust, and others. But the word picture he gives here in these verses that I want us to think about today is take off and put on. Take off the old human nature. Things like anger, rage, malice, obscene language. I think we probably know what those nasty things are. But what about that take them off part? It's the same word or the same saying that would be used for taking off your coat or taking off your hat. And, oh, by the way, it means keep on taking them off. Just always do it. But you know what? You can't just take off the bad stuff. I mean, you'd be naked. You'd have no clothes. You can't merely stop being angry. Stop cursing. Stop lusting. Stop being greedy. If you don't clothe yourself with something different, the old clothes somehow just keep coming back on. So the question is, what will you pick up and clothe yourself with instead? What will you put on like a coat? If you set down anger, even rage, what do you pick up and clothe yourself with? Compassion, gentleness, patience. I put on compassion. I put on gentleness. I put on patience. Maybe it's even putting on those clothes so we can be compassionate, gentle, and patient with 
ourselves. Sometimes it's easier to be those things with someone else. Being hard with me is hard. It's an active, ongoing process that, that just doesn't feel natural. Well, and that's because it isn't natural. What comes naturally from inside our human nature are things like anger, rage, malice, lousy language, to use the words by the Apostle Paul. That's what's natural. That's what comes out from inside. We have to put on, we have to clothe ourselves with compassion, gentleness, kindness, patience. We have to do it on purpose because we choose it by the power of the Holy Spirit at work in us. Those new clothes like compassion, gentleness, patience, love takes effort and practice. Keep on taking off the old clothes. Keep on putting on the new. Now, you might be saying, or at least thinking, but I thought salvation, God's work in me, was about grace. And it is. It is grace, not magic. It's usually not instantaneous like magic. It's grace. Okay, so then what is grace? Grace is God at work in you to accomplish what you cannot do on your own. Of course, of course grace includes forgiveness. It includes salvation. But that's just the beginning. That's just the first part. Grace is so much more. In our Wesleyan way of talking about it, we call it sanctification. God at work in and through us to transform us, to change us into his likeness. And, and to be clear, to be clear, accurate reflectors of him, reflectors of God. You know, that's right. We were created in God's image. We are all made in the image of God. And until we truly reflect that image accurately, like a mirror, we'll be in the process of growing to be like Jesus when we invite him to be part of our life, to be our life. You see, we can easily fall into the trap of thinking that being a Christ follower is easy. And I can tell you, it's not. We can think it should not take work. We should not take, it should not take effort because it's actually all about grace. But it does. Remember, the truth is grace is not opposed to effort. Grace is opposed to earning. Grace is all about God working with us and in us to do what we cannot do on our own. Take off the old. It's a direction. It's an instruction. But it's something that we can't do on our own, nor does God do it without our cooperation and effort. Oh, I, I know. We can be stubborn at times, like the two-year-old of, I do it myself. But no, we do it with and by God's grace. Now, it has to be done by God's grace, through the life of Christ in us, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Take off the old self, things like anger, rage, malice, obscene, nasty language, lying to each other. If you don't see any of those things in you, well, I suggest you ask God to show you what things in your life need to be set aside, taken off, because there always is something taken off like a coat and changed. Have you taken off those things, at least in your mind's eye? Okay, then don't stay naked, don't stay undressed, get dressed, clothe yourself, put on the new nature, which is renewed in knowledge by conforming to the image of the one who created it. 
Here it is in, in verses 12 and 13 of Colossians chapter 3. Therefore, as God's choice, holy, and loved people put on compassion, humility, gentleness, and patience, be tolerant with each other, and if anyone has a complaint against anyone, forgive each other, as the Lord forgave you, so also forgive each other. I know, that's a tall order. But because you are holy and loved, because you are one in whom Christ lives, put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. God, patience. That's my nemesis. Yes, it is a tall order. Stay connected to Christ because it is grace at work in you that can make these things real. I know sometimes, if not all the time, this taking off and putting on is hard. So what do I hold on to? What can you hold on to? There's a song that we sing together as we gather in church, and, and we'll do that this week. The song is, Yet Not I, But Christ in Me. Sound familiar? Each verse reminds us of a truth about Christ in us, Christ in me, and then each refrain begins with, To this I hold, hold on to it, cling to it, like a rope dangling off a cliff. Hold on tight. If you've never heard the song, you can find it on YouTube. It's called, Yet Not I, But Christ in Me, by City of Light. Go listen to it. But first, the first verse goes, What gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? My Redeemer, my salvation, the one who rescues me from sin, death, and separation from God. And then we sing, To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus. For my life, is wholly bound to his. Yet not I, but Christ through me. The second verse. The night is dark, but I am not forsaken, for by my side the Savior he will stay. I labor on in weakness and rejoicing, for in my need his power is displayed. And I suspect there's someone listening today that that's the very same place where you are in that dark night. And then we sing, to this I hold, my shepherd will defend me. Through the deepest valley he will lead. And then on to verse 3. No fate I dread. I know I am forgiven. The future, sure, the price it has been paid. Forgiven, yes. There's too much. I can't be forgiven for what I've done. You know what? It's not true. Then there's the phrase, the refrain of the, of the song. To this I hold, my sin has been defeated. And then the final verse. With every breath. I long to follow Jesus, for he has said that he will bring me home. No, you know, none of us will get out of this life as it is alive. Now, we'll go on forever, though. One thing is sure that in the end, none of us are out alive, but Christ will bring us home to life alive in him. The refrain, here it is, to this I hold my hope is only Jesus, yes, all the glory evermore to him. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but Christ in me. So what do you hold on to? Do you cling to the old ways, the old clothes, the bitterness, the anger? At what others have done, the anger of, of what you have done and can't forgive, the desire for more, that, that thing that others have that are out of reach for you, I can never change. It's hopeless for me. Do you claim, do you hold on to that? 
when you set those things aside, you take them off, you lay them down and pick up love, joy, peace, patience, compassion, gentleness, kindness, and self-control, and hold on to the truth of Christ Jesus who gave himself for us that we might live. And these things, not by our own strength or even trying hard, but by grace, by grace and the power of Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's an everyday thing. We sang a song that says it over and over, to this I hold. Holding takes effort. Taking off the old takes effort. Putting on the new takes effort. But effort's not enough. Trying hard's not enough. In fact, it just doesn't work. It's not to what we do. It's what we hold on to. It's not what we hold on to. It's who we hold on to. As followers and apprentices of Jesus, that's the who we hold on to. It's Jesus, the Son of God, who gave himself on the cross for us and now lives again that we too might live. Ask Christ to be in you. Pray that you live in and through him, yet not I, but Christ in me. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you've given us Jesus. That Jesus, by our own invitation, will come in and live in us. Cleanse us from our sin. Cleanse us from our unrighteousness. Cleanse us from the ugliness. And then fill us. Fill us with your life and your grace. Your love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Lord, thank you for the life that you give us that we might be like you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, hear this blessing from me. It's a blessing written by the Apostle Paul himself and sent to his friends in the town of Thessalonica. Here it is. Now. May the grace of God our Father himself and our Lord Jesus guide us on our way back to you. May the Lord cause you to increase and enrich your love for each other and for everyone in the same way as we also love you. May the love cause your hearts to be strengthened, to be blameless in holiness before our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his people. Amen, amen, and amen. Go in God's good.